Greetings fellow conspirators, Mortars Veil here. And today we are back playing some more Crack Pack. And today I believe should be the end of our three-part Twilight Forest Saga. So just, just showing you guys these awesome trophies that I've collected here. So what are we doing today? Well, we're doing a few things inside the Twilight Forest itself. And it's actually going to require one of these Naga trophies. But I'll make sure I put the rest of those back. We're also going to need a bunch of wool. I'll go ahead and turn a stack of string into wool. Whoops. Like so. So 16 wool. And you might know there's 16 colors of wool. So we're going to make sure that we get one of each color. So rose red, yellow. We'll make orange right now so we don't forget. So red, orange, yellow, green. Blue, purple is red and blue. Then we also need some bone meal. We're actually going to need a good deal of bone meal, which is in this one. And I mean, we're not going to need that much. So actually, we're probably not even going to need 24, but just in case. All right, so bone meal. Let's see here. We're going to need pink. And we can also make magenta while we're here. We will need light blue, which is like this. And we will also need cyan, which is not with bone meal, which is with lapis and a cactus green. And so that means we're going to need more, where is it? Ores, there we go. This is where I keep all the ores, obviously, in the bag labeled ores. Uh, let's go ahead and start actually making these wools. So it's here's a red one. Oh, we're going to run out fast. Tell you what, let's switch this out to our loot bag. There we go. Because uh, we don't need this right at the moment. And this is also going to be a good visual rep representation of what we have and what we don't have. So red, orange, Yellow. <laughs> and I guess pink kind of belongs in there too. So we should do that one. So pink, here we go. We'll do purple, I guess, while we're at it. Pink, purple, and magenta. Very good. Put those away. So pink, we'll put there. Sure, why not? Purple over here. Magenta kind of goes along with that. Now we need, uh, let's see, where do we leave off? Green. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And then while we're here, we'll do the cyan and the light blue. Uh, there's no light green. There's lime green, though. That's, that's what I was missing. Lime green, which we make like that. And I'll get some lime green. Okay. So green, blue, light blue, cyan, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, let's see. So we need brown, of course, still. Uh, where did I put? Did I leave those somewhere? Cocoa beans, cocoa beans. I'm looking, guys. I know I had some in the last map, and I thought I gave myself some for this map. Oh, I might have to go on a journey to find them, though. Yeah, I don't know where I put them. Darn. Okay, well, um, <laughs> let me go grab some cocoa beans, and I'll finish making these wolves off camera, because you've seen this all before. All right, guys, we are ready to roll. I have made all 16 colors of wool, had a little bit of dye left over, not much. And yeah, now we're good to go. One thing I should mention, forgot to mention, was I made this open, these open blocks tanks and this XP drain so that I can just really quickly save the experience for whenever I need it. And we're actually almost out of room. But before the mobs catch up with us, let's go. Whee! Uh, first, I want to show you something down here on the next level. I put in some more mob skulls, and as well, I put in those lich skulls, and it looks pretty cool, I think. I really like those ones. 
But anyways, we're going back into the Twilight Forest one more time. Well, on camera anyways, so that I can show you. Here we go. So remember the very first thing that we discovered when we went into the Twilight Forest? It was this like underground layer of, of seeming emptiness and stuff. But it turns out... Oh, those are my arrows. Uh, not this way. Back off, guy. Okay. Um, it's somewhere by the torches. I'm not quite sure where. Ah, here we go. So here is our really random place that we discovered and we're looking through. And I found out... Is it this way? This way? The one area that we went to... Hmm. Not here. Is it here? Maybe? Ah, yeah, this looks right. Yes, here we go. So, this stuff that we can't go through, we can't break it. But there is this uh, latent trophy pedestal, and it's got a little picture of a Naga on it. So I was like, well, hey, let's put a Naga trophy on it. Oh, yeah? Now, do we get this back? We can, sweet. Okay. Coolio. So, this opens up a whole new area to explore. Um, so this is a, I believe it's a goblin stronghold, something, something to that effect. And we're gonna find goblins. Ooh, find some anvils that I'll pick up because I could definitely use that iron. Actually, you know what? With the deconstruction table, we can probably turn that back into like thirty some iron. That's pretty cool. I think in here. Ooh, haha, -ha, sneaky. I'll take that back. Thank you very much. Ironwood, iron, steel leaf sword, that's cool, charm of keeping, cool, cool, all good stuff, all good stuff, but we're not seeing any mobs, which is weird, I was sure, oh, never mind, there's a creeper, and this place has some special mobs that I really want to show you guys, um, I think we saw a few of them when we were first here, like the, let's see, there was a, a goblin with a ball and chain thing. There was, but there's also some other stuff that's really cool. Okie doke. Now somewhere, blue wool, wait, oh, that's not lapis. I thought, <laughs> I thought that was lapis. Um, it's just blue wool. And I have plenty of lapis, so I don't really need that blue wool. Okay, some, oh, here we go. This is a... Helmet crab. <laughs> and when you kill it, it drops... Oh, that one dropped armor shards. Cool. Ah, that's actually good to know. Okay, so in here we have some more helmet crabs. Back off, guys. Uh-oh. Oh, whoa. Little guy in pants. He's pretty tough, actually. And what did he drop? Uh, I'm not sure. It looked like a thing with like a mi missing texture. Oh, okay, so there's more. Ooh, wow. This place really goes down quite a ways. Or there's there's a lot to it actually, more than I thought. And okay, it goes back up over here. I know there's a boss room in here somewhere. And whoop, whoops, a little bit of lag there. Accidentally used up a torch. Hang on, that's cobblestone. I didn't put that there. Oh, that's weird. Okay. There's not a whole lot of mobs in here. There's a lot less than I thought there would be, actually. So it's not not very difficult at all. But that's okay. Difficulty is not my forte. Wow. It really is kind of lacking. I'm not sure why. This area should have generated already. Maybe there's something in the fortress. Maybe it's those unbreakable blocks. Maybe. I don't really know. I'm guessing here, kind of shooting in the dark, as it were. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Because uh, cause it's dark. Whoops. Okay. Aha! You almost got me there, little slime beetle. What was that sound? Whoa. Hey, come back. <laughs> Listen to that evil little chuckle. <laughs> Oh, okay. So here's one of these ball and chains, guy. Block and chain, rather. Of course, there's no there. There are no spheres in Minecraft. There are only 
or only cubes. I guess the uh, the boss room would probably be on the bottom floor. I would think. Whoa. Okay, we got some kobolds. Hey guys. Hello. Wow. You know, you would think single single player would be a lot less laggy than multiplayer, but the lag is still there for the most part. Just kind of funny. You know. In a sad sort of way. Okay. Bottom level. We're clearing this pretty thoroughly, I would say. Ooh, what's this? Okay. Um, and still, whoop. So honestly, like, I'm not too worried about the mobs or even the boss, because we've been... You know, I, I've said it once, <laughs> but we're, we're very powerful at this point in the game. Uh, unbreaking two. I'm actually fine. I'll take the armor shards though. We want those for for our project where we're gonna make the armor. So I'll take those, and we will move right along. We're actually kind of running low on torches. Let's make some more. And there they go, sucked up into our staff of the sojourner. Sojourner's staff. Sojourner's truth. Hmm. Gotcha, and come on. This looks like the end of the dungeon. Or maybe it's just a weird generating thing. Oh! Oh dear. Oh, there's ores in there. There's diamond and. Huh! That's really cool. If I couldn't fly, this would be kind of a problem, maybe. Hey, come on. Okay, that's obsidian. That's cool. I really like this room. Um, but that looks like all there is to this part. So I think we'll fly back through here. Oh, hey guys. Whoa! <laughs> Did you hear that little yelp? It was like this indignant little, hey, you hit me! Ah! Ah! Okay. Um, up here, I think, is where we came down. So this wing of the dungeon, I think, is clear. So we can head back. And look for that boss room, wherever it was. Okay, oh, another kobold, and another block and chain guy. <laughs> they're, they're pretty cute, I gotta say. They're pretty cute. Alright, moving right along. Um, ooh, rainbow tree. Gotcha, slime beetle. There's actually a lot of... Quite a lot of these running around. Whoa! Oh, and a spawner. What's over here? This is a... Oh, it's a it's a helmet crab spawner. That's cool. I might actually want this, because this could be a good source of... Because um, these guys drop the armor shards. So, I mean, I guess I'm not going to need that many armor shards, so probably not. But still, that's, that's pretty neat. And in here, we have another spawner. Does, do they attack me? I don't think so. Uh, what do we have here? Steel leaf, steel leaf stuff. Steel leaf sword. Uh, that's kind of cool, I guess. Let's go ahead and put this away. That away. That away. That away, we won't need it. So iron. I guess I'll take this sword. And power three punch one, not really a f huge deal. Okay, so we'll put the swords away too, and press onward. So we've got some spawners, we'll remember that in case we ever want to use these guys for anything. And they are pretty cool. Whoops. Hey, guy. <laughs> oh, and sometimes they drop fish, okay. That's cool. Alright, up here again. This place is pretty extensive. I, I wasn't expecting it to be so... So large. And more iron bars. What do we have through here? Ooh, this looks like a place. We've got obsidian and torches in there. And a spawner. What are oh what are you guys? Night Phantom. Can I Whoa? Okay. They're not a huge Oh, they're shooting projectiles. Aw, oh, poor guys. <laughs> Oh, whoa, 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 am I really that low on health? 
No, no, okay, it's just a graphical thing. I was gonna say, whoa, they must really pack a punch. Ah, I can't see. And, come on. Oh my gosh. Gotcha. Aha, and here we go. Whoops. Skeleton somewhere. What have we got? Ooh. Phantom Helm. Phantom Helm. Ah, let's make some more room in our in our loot chest for all this stuff. All these goodies. Phantom plate armor, knightly axe, and a sword. Oh yes. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I will take it all. And there's one more. Yeah, a pick. Cool. So these things are kind of neat. They for instance, this has does extra damage to armored targets, and um, one of these, like the axe, does extra damage to unarmored targets. So, like, I could I could conceivably, um, you know, use those for different targets, which is pretty cool. I like it. Cool place, cool dungeon. Ten out of ten. Would exploit again. Okay, um, I might stick around here for a little bit and farm these armor shards off of these guys. Because uh, we do want to make the, that armor set, because it was pretty cool looking. Ooh, and I'll also take that. But we have more stuff yet to do in the twilight. And it's kind of far away, so I will cut till we get there, and then we'll do it. Surprise, surprise, here we are at the questing ram. So it's about a 2,000 block journey from where we started to over here. And along the way, I, I went back to drop off some stuff and went to level 0, then I killed a Naga and went up to level 12 again. Um, I, I'm basically using my levels into a, into a tank, an open blocks tank, so that I can use them whenever I want to. Which is why I'm not up to like level 40 right now or something. Anyway, so this guy is pretty cool. Um, this is the furthest one away I've found in my world, and he takes wool. I think we right click on him, but we might just... Yeah, yeah, see look, he's like, oh... Oh, what's that? So you know how farm animals fall around if you have food. He's like, oh, wool. Wool is food. And if we right click on him, he gets this little red stripe and that particle effect. So red, orange, yellow. And you'll notice that he's kind of getting a little bit uh, longer as we do this. And that's because he's going to give us something special when we're done. So there we go. Now he's got his <laughs> rainbow across. Uh, almost enough. And I don't think it matters which order we give them to him in. It just, like, places it wherever they're supposed to go. So since we have all 16 colors, he'll eat all 16 colors of wool. And start to look pretty weird when he does. Uh, let's see, two more up here. So, hey guy. Take that, and take that one. Two more, lime and gray. There you go. Ooh, look at that. Now rainbow particles. And he drops a block of diamond. Hey, give me that. Block of diamond, block of lapis, block of iron, block of gold, block of emerald, which is all great rewards. But the one we really wanted was this crumble horn. This is a special artifact, I guess, that um, I think, I believe it turns like stone into cobblestone and cobblestone into gravel and like it makes things crumble, hence crumble horn, um, and it's really cool. Sadly, it does take durability, but I think since we have our arcane reconstructor, we can just use that. So, we've already used this guy up. He's of no further importance to us. We could kill him, but I guess we'll just leave him here, happy and and size of a bus now. So, uh, this was the furthest one away. There is one closer to my portal, but I want to save him and not do this, like, not uh, give him all the wool, because so, he looks a lot cooler without all those stripes on him. In my opinion, anyways. So, yeah, so that was the second thing that we wanted to do in the Twilight Forest. Let's put all this stuff away in our loot bag, which is empty, almost. I uh, took everything out, and I also made a couple more safari nets in case we ran across anything interesting while I was here. Um, but now I guess we'll head back to the overworld where we can do a few more things with the items from the Twilight Forest. So I will see you guys back there. Time to start exploiting this stuff that we got from the Twilight Forest. So I went ahead and captured some vanilla animals, you know, cow, pig, sheep, chicken, horse, and that's it. Um, I also caught an ocelot because I just found him wandering around. And this stuff 
uh, that we got from some of the hollowed hills. It's called transformation power and powder, and it turns regular animals into twilight animals. So I, I kind of want to see this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. That is cool. Hey, actually, you know what? We're going to need a lot more safari nets. So let's get, I guess, eight more. I think that should be enough. Like so. Excellent. Okay. So let's capture this guy so he doesn't, uh, so we can clone him and then get venison, I guess. We probably get venison from him, don't we? Uh, let me look through here. Venison steak, yeah. Yeah, we probably get venison from that guy. Cool. Um, let's put the ocelot in here and try him next. Oh, nope. I guess that doesn't do anything. Yeah. Oh, well. You get to stay an ocelot, ocelot. Uh-huh. So that turns into one of those rams. Pretty cool. And pig, I'm guessing, turns into one of the wild boars. Indeed. We'll get you two. And, oops. I'm not sure what the horse turns into. It might not turn into anything like the ocelot. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, he just, he doesn't like that. That's okay. And chicken might turn into a bird. No? Doesn't turn into anything? Okay. That's okay, though. So we still got some of the cool mobs from the Twilight Forest, and we can, I don't know, now we have them. <laughs> I guess that's, that's the only real claim to fame that we have. Uh, let's put these up here for now. This is my random don't know what to do with yet chest. Uh, I guess we'll keep that. One of the pigs died and I had to go get a new one. All right, so then uh, we come over here, and we've got these night metal ingots. That was actually kind of a lot of levels. Or, you know, for just cooking that much. So what I did was knight or shard. Here we go, armor shard. You can put these in a nine by nine or a three by three grid, and it makes armor shard clusters. Then you cook these up, and they make these ingots. So it actually, it took quite a while to make to get all the, enough of these to make all this stuff. But now that we have it, we can make the armor. Oh yeah, this this looks cool. I like this, guys. Now, boom, knightly plate, knightly helm, knightly boots, and knightly trousers, maybe? Oh, knightly greaves, okay, that kind of makes sense. Uh, let's also make one, two, three. We're going to make an armor stand from Bibliocraft, so we can see what this stuff looks like. Is that not right? Oh, no, 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 I know what I need. We need slabs, and then we do this. Aha! So armor stand, let's put that here temporarily. And then we can go Knightly Greaves. Boots. Oh, look, look at those little flares on the sides. Oh, oh, oh. oh that is so cool. That looks, that looks awesome, guys. I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a statue from the chisel mod and put that armor on myself because that looks awesome. Actually, while we're here... I think we can make a sword. I wonder if that, that probably looks pretty cool. So we'll make it. And, oh, I guess we can't. We have to do a, a statue to actually see that. But we can take a look at ourselves. That's a pretty cool sword. I like this. I like this stuff. Very cool. But we also are going to make, with this fiery blood, we can make some fiery ingots, I believe. Yes. So that's seven. Then we want two blaze rods. Very good. And so we put the blaze rods like this, and then we put the fire ingots across like that, and that makes a fiery pick, which has auto smelting. And then I'm also going to make some fiery boots, just, just because, so that we can disenchant them and get the fiery ore too. Now let's go test this thing out. Um, is there anything in here? If not, we'll, we'll just get the. Oh, there's iron. Okay. So, aha! So we automatically get the ingot. That's pretty cool. And then it does take durability, so here's my thought. We can go down into our base to the arcane reconstructor. And if we put this thing in, okay, it seems to be working. Yep, yep, it's taking the durability. And it's done. Awesome. So now we have a, a forever 
auto smelting pick. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it's obviously, it's not as good as the Tinker's Construct ones, but it's still, it's not bad. Pretty cool stuff. Um, what else? What else? Um, these just summon zombies and these just shoot projectiles, so they're not incredibly useful. Crumblehorn, let's go try this thing. Um, I kind of want to go a little bit far away from my base. Maybe over here looks good. Yeah, right here. So if we hold, actually, is there a cave? Oh, this must be some of the water, the rejuvenation water. So if we right click, oh, okay. And then we hit right click again to stop, but look. So I'm holding down right click and it's turning all the stone into cobblestone. At least it's in within a certain radius, I think. And it's breaking the dirt. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Ooh, we got some flint. I'll take that. Pretty cool. And then I'm assuming that just like the fiery pick that we just made, we can take this down into the arcane reconstructor and get the durability back. So that way we don't have to do the questing ram thing multiple times. We can just do this once. So we'll see. Yes, it went in and it is repairing. Awesome. Cool stuff. Uh, now there is some more stuff that we can make. Uh, specifically with the Carmonite. Um, we could also make some stuff with the maze map focuses, which, by the way, the, the Minotaurs drop in my mob spawner, so but we have a renewable source of these, which is cool. Um, ore magnets got from the Hollow Hills. Uh, they, they kind of act like this, but only with ores. And Naga Scales, Moonworm Queen, kind of like the Sojourner Staff, but it shoots little glowy worms, <laughs> which is kind of neat. Uh, Ironwood, so yeah, m most of the stuff we already, we've already already covered, so we might do something with Carmenite later, um, and, but I think for now that's good. So I do need to make a statue and do that, but not right now, we'll do that in another episode. Right now what we want to do is, aha, so here we find ourselves again, yet again in our arcane reconstruction place. I have added more mob skulls, I think I already showed you the lich skeleton skulls on, on there, but that's pretty cool. Um, so what are we making? We are making a Awakened Dicorium Axe. And to do that, we will need to go over here to our arcane work table and grab ourselves this Dicorium Axe that I made. Um, yeah, so there we go. Now we pop this thing in the middle and cross our fingers. <laughs> Yeah, because that's about all we can do. Actually, hang on. Let's take that off just in case. Okay. So it's working, and let's talk about this while it's going. So what does this need? It needs all of this Essentia, which I believe that I have. Um, it takes all the kind of normal stuff that we need, Axe of the Stream, and then all the stuff that all of the Awakened tools take. And it's dangerous as well. So I'm not really sure what's wrong with this setup that I have here. I've heard... Um, that the arcane infusion altar takes into account things that are within a five block radius of the runic matrix, not of the middle pedestal. So I think that means one, two, clear the last three, four, five. So both rows or both layers of mob skulls should count toward uh, negating flux. However, if it was one, two, three, four, five, then that would mean that only this top layer counts and the bottom layer doesn't count. So that could actually explain why we were having so much trouble because there weren't as many obstacles in the top layer at first because you can't place them on thin air. Like they're, they're kind of floating on thin air now because I placed them on a block and then removed the block. So that could explain it. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. So we're just going to watch this thing pretty carefully and hope that it works out. And again, so I guess with the first... The first one, the shovel that we made, this shovel, it seemed to take the Essentia pretty well and it didn't have problems until it started taking these items off the pedestals. So I'm not, I guess, it seems like it's going okay. But this axe is going to be really cool. If you'll remember, I showed the axe of the stream I think once and that chopped down trees pretty quickly. But it's kind of like the, what is it, the woodcutter's axe or the lumber axe from Tinker's Construct where it can chop down entire trees, this thing will chop down all of the trees that you want. All of them. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, so it's taken all of the Essentia, now it's going to start with the items. Very good, taking the Icorium. 
Okay, so I don't want to say anything because I know if I do, I'll jinx it. So I, I'm just going to stop until until we finish, and then, and then we can discuss how this went. But yeah, and we'll also talk about this awesome axe that we have. Or that we, that we might have, if everything goes according to plan. Which... It looks... Like... It's... Doing! Yay! It worked! Without a hitch! Awesome! Awakened Icorium Axe. Oh yeah! So this thing is pretty neat, guys. It's, it can, you, of course, it can break just one block like normal. It can also break like a 5x5 five five square of blocks. And finally, it can break down entire trees. So I kind of want to take this thing into the twilight and see exactly how true that is. Like how many trees will this thing cut down? Or um, how much wood in a tree will it cut down, rather? So will it, like, you know those enormous twilight trees? Twilight Oaks, I think. Um, will it cut down one of those? And if it does, that seems really OP. Uh, thank you for that. So what we're going to do is put Soulbound and Efficiency 5. Unfortunately, uh-oh, it doesn't seem like we have enough levels. Oh no, whatever shall we do? Well, <laughs> so remember the levels that we've been saving in, this, in these tanks all along? We can put this stuff away first so we get some inventory. Let's put that away. Just right click on these tanks. And I'm not even sure how many levels we're going to need. We'll just get like, I don't know, 23? That, that's probably enough. Maybe. And come over to the anvil. So we want Soulbound on first. And we'll call this Veil's Power Axe. Very good. And then we can put efficiency 5 on it for 10 levels. Awesome. Very cool. So now we've got a, a good suite of power tools. Eventually I do want to make those uh, chameleon tools, like I've said, but that, that can wait until another time. Whoa, hey guy. Hey little guy. Having trouble? I see ya. Hmm, dangerous out here. Yeah, but anyways, I think that's going to be about it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed our Twilight Saga adventures. We, it, we made out pretty good. Got a lot of cool stuff that we can do some pretty powerful things with. So I'm very happy with our progress. Anyways, guys, hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next video.